Okay, so on uh, to reproduce some of these graphs on your calculator. There's several. Uh, there's some, you're, we're going to be using a lot of several of these top row buttons on the calculator. One of the first things, one of the first things you need to know is: is your calculator in degree mode or radian mode? Most likely, you're all in degree mode, but let's check. Hit the mode button and make sure that. Oh. Uh, about the third line down or so, make sure that you are on, it, it, that you oh. have degree highlighted as opposed to radiant. Alright, and once you do, just go ahead and, and, and do second quit. <clears throat> Alright, so we're in degree mode. Now, uh, if we want to, uh, if we want to check, uh, let's see, let go to, uh, hit the window button. So top row, second one from the left, hit the window button. I made a polygraph. And if, <laughs> nice. if you're, uh, the default settings for the, the TIs uh, is to have your, uh, it divides your viewing window in, you can go, you go from X min to X max and from Y min to Y max. That's what, that's what it's telling you. Uh, the default settings are to go from negative 10 to 10 and negative 10 to 10. So if your window says anything else right now, just so we're all starting from the same place, hit the, uh, hit the zoom button. So right top, right top row, middle button, hit zoom and arrow down to Z standard. Hit enter. I got you, Doug. And that will, put, that will make your window be the default settings. Uh, now what? So at least we have so we have a, a, the same starting place. Hit the top button. How about one of you hold one device and the other one of you hold the other device? What? That's not fun. Okay. Tutorial. Okay. Now. Why don't you just lay it down on the ready? No. 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 We don't do that. Right, so so uh, go to the go to zoom button and go down to zoom uh, Z standard and hit enter and that will. That will give you the default settings of negative 10 to 10 on the x-axis and negative 10 to 10 on the y-axis. All right, let's, let's type in our function. Upper left button says y equals. Push that button. If you have any equations in there, you can hit the clear button. And we're going to do, let's do sine theta. So he, you hit the sine button. And the button, the button says the x comma t comma theta comma n. Use that button for your variable. So you can just put in our equation here, we wrote theta. It's too uh, small of a screen. It serves the same function of, as just x wait. does, and so just hit that button. It'll type an x. That's okay. Exactly. Uh, if your calculator does not no, 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 close no. your parentheses yes, for you, this. get in the habit of closing your parentheses. So sine oh. x, close your parentheses, uh. hit enter, and then hit graph, and you will. Have a graph that probably looks like a it's on the top, but okay. slight straight, a slight line. You're probably not going to see much of anything yep. interesting. Okay. How's the one on the video? I'm trying to. Okay, here, no. Zero. Here, go, to, go to zoom. No, ignore that. Zoom. Zoom. Go down to Z standard. It was it was too small for that. Like it well, just. I, I know. I'm getting there. Okay. Okay. So you see just a little bit here, and you're going to see just a sliver right there. And that's not very useful. So what we're going to do, what, when we are graphing, excuse me, Ready? when we're graphing a trigonometric function, we should have sound effects. Yes, it is a big word that I am using here while other people are talking around the room. When we, if we want to graph a trigonometric function, the people that program these calculators did us a favor. On that zoom button, hit the zoom button, and arrow down to Z trig. Hit enter. Now it's going to redraw your graph using settings that are way more useful. Now it actually looks like the graph that I'm going to the screen there. And notice where the tick marks are on your axes. Why does mine say X min is 352? What? No, I... What you have now on your screen, excuse me. What you have now on your screen uh, is you have the you have the sine function. The tick marks on the on the axis, or the tick marks on the axes. There uh, on the vertical axis, there's a tick mark for every 
distance of one. Yep. And if you go back to your window settings, you uh, you will notice that uh, y it has changed. scale y SCL from negative ten. Y scale is one. That means that every one unit on your y axis, it's going to put a tick mark. And what are your y min and y max settings? It's no longer negative ten and ten. Negative four and four. Negative three fifty two point five. Okay. No, 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 why? Uh, it'll, four and one. It's going to be a little bit different, four. Negative but four and four. let's just estimate. It's kind of hard looking at that. Negative four to four, negative three to three, six, negative six to six. You're somewhere in a useful That's range there. Uh, on your graph, where are the tick marks on your x axis? Right there. It put a tick mark here, here, and here. And at the end, of, right now at the edge, you can't really see it. Here, 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 here. So instead of trying to put a tick mark at every single degree, uh, what it did was it made a reasonable choice for tick marks all on the x-axis, and if you go to your window setting, you should have a, an x-scale of 90. Can't really see it well. That means it's only going to put a tick mark every 90 degrees. And what's in your x-min and x-max, the calculator picks some decimals that are close, I don't know why, but basically you're going to be from negative 360, to 360, roughly. Right here. Now, the, the X scales down here. thing, okay. uh, go, go to your window setting and change X scale to 1, and then hit the graph button again. X scale. And take a look at your X axis. Where's X scale right here? 1? Uh, yes, change it. Hit that 1, enter, and go back to graph. Take a look at your X axis. Why is it like... It looks like a very thick x-axis. What the calculator is trying that? to do is put a tick mark at every single degree. How do you get that? We have, uh, on the window button, we have exceeded the uh, graphing limitation, the, the display, the limits of the display of the calculator. That would be right there. That's why, if, if you're talking about degrees, if you're going from negative 360 to 360, there is no way that this calculator is able to draw 720 little tick marks from, from one end to the other. So choose something that's going to help you. Uh, if you're graphing something like this, it may, uh, something, a choice like 90 for your X scale will put tick marks in meaningful places. So you can go back there, change your X, X scale back to 90, and then graph it, and you'll have tick marks in sensible places again. And so there is the uh, quick and dirty way to graph these things on your calculator. Now, when you're done graphing a trigonometric function, remember that your x scale is going to be negative 360 to 360, roughly. So if you ever try to graph something else, your window is going to be way off. What I would suggest you do is that whenever you're done graphing something like this, uh, is go back to your zoom menu and arrow down to Z default. Z standard or Z default? Z standard. Z standard. And hit enter, and that will give you that will put you back on the negative 10, 10, and negative 10, 10, and where most of the graphs that you will make in a class like this will fit into that window. Negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10. But now you know how to get your window into something useful for a trigonometric function, and how to get it back to normal. To normal. There you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.